syndicating a deal. We're going to talk through what just kind of like a case study of investing with your IRA versus an EQRP and what this was. So we had a we had a deal with a client of ours that went and bought a medical center over in Texas and they had a $50 million purchase. This is what the deal looked like. $10 million of cash was put down, 40 million was leveraged in debt. And from a percentage standpoint, let's look at it like this. 20% was put down in cash, 80% was leveraged in debt. Five years later, it sold for $100 million. So if you had invested 100,000 from your IRA, it doubles to 200,000, that's awesome. But because UBIT tax that's associated with IRAs, you now owe eight, uh, $80,000 of that profit that you make as 80% was leveraged, now owes tax. Why? Because the government says, well, you had some help in making that money, so we're gonna take some money back. And you'll be taxed up to 37% on that deal. So you could end up paying anywhere from twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars back to the government just because, um, and there's no way around it. So it is unfortunately just a part of the investment uh, expense that goes into that. But uh, UBIT, as you as you most of you may know, or if you don't know, is unrelated business income tax that's triggered by unrelated debt financed income. And like I said, it's a nasty tax where you can go. Uh, be taxed up to 37% on your leverage. So IRAs in this specific deal, we're going to pay up to $29,000, $30,000 in tax. EQRP investors are going to pay zero. So why is that? Well, it's because EQRPs are exempt from UDFI. And I like to say we just have better lobbyists inside the 401k structures than they do in the IRAs. Um, if you are already invested in a deal with a self-directed IRA, and you want to escape that UBIT tax, right? You could already be inside. And this is a big, this is important to point out, especially right now with all the legislation is you you may say, well, if this thing passes, what's going to happen, right? You're either going to have to take the, the distribution uh, plus penalties and, and taxes associated with that, or you can move it. You can change the vehicle that we're doing it with and be completely safe. So, a lot of people have already started coming over to us because they don't like the red, the red, <laughs> we like to call it the sniper that's targeting them on their back with uh, this legislation. It's an in-kind rollover. So we're going to change the registration or the owner of the asset from your self-directed IRA to your EQRP. We had an individual come up to us a week, uh, a week or so ago that said, hey, this uh, property that I'm in, is going to be selling in a week. And I don't want to pay this UBIT tax. How how can I get this moved over and not pay that? So we got them taken care of, set up, re-registered. And when it sold, that $30,000 tax bill that she would have paid is now no more because she changed the vehicle and the structure that owned that investment in the syndication. And now she gets to take that $30,000 and go put it into another syndication, which is awesome. Or you can take that $30,000 and pay for that trip to Cabo with your wife that you've been saving up for a long time and go spend a month there. Uh, hey, Marsha. Yeah. So if I, so I could have invested in a syndication with my IRA mm -hmm. and then a week before it sold, I could have come to you and say, Hey, I want to pay you a bit, help me out. And you would have been able to do that. Did I hear that right? Yeah. So what the process is more of just paperwork and working with the managing partner of the deal. So we would, our whole team takes care of everything from start to finish. So uh, you're not having to worry about how to do it because we do that for all our clients. Um, we essentially say whoever your custodian is, we tell them, Hey, look, this asset needs to be re registered to a new owner. We submit all that paperwork. Your managing partner signs off on the deal or the, essentially the transfer of ownership from your IRA to your EQRP. And then legally it's listed as new owner is, we'll say Mike Angelo, EQRP, 401k now owns it, not the IRA, and you're not going to pay UBIT. Hey, so Parker, real quick. Uh, so I'm literally getting ready to go through this right now. So mm -hmm. Parker and I had a call earlier this week uh, on this exact topic. It's actually 
a, a deal that's getting ready to sell in the next 60 days. And um, it was a holy shit moment that I'm going to pay 15 grand in taxes. So my, my 2x multiple, he talked about taking, you know, 100 grand and doubling it. You really, you're going to lose. It's more like 1.7 if you think about 30 grand in taxes. So um, it, it's real deal for me. And so just something I want to make sure, you know, share with you guys is it, it's this is uh, not just Parker talking about it, but it, it's, it's affecting, could affect anybody. So, hey, Parker, could you explain UBIT, the acronym? There's probably a couple of acronyms in there. Um, if you just digress for a second. Yeah, so so let's go back real quick. So UBIT is unrelated business income tax that is triggered by unrelated debt financed income. So unrelated business income tax is really a tax that says, well, you're conducting business, but it's unrelated to actual business because the way of your the way your LLC is structured. Most loans that you take out are non-recourse, right, from banks with your IRAs that you use. If you were to, let's just say you had a, uh, let's say you had a single family home that you bought, you're going to have to get a non-recourse to get that. So any profits that are generated using that leverage is considered uh, unrelated debt financed income, which is why the tax comes in, because it's unrelated to the actual business that's going on other than just the debt being associated with it. So uh, the big thing to remember is that in IRAs, if there's leverage, you're going to pay tax. If you're inside this structure at the EQRP, you're never going to pay a tax again with debt. Hey, Parker. So the reason EQRP works is because we're not part of the IRA tax code. Is, Correct. is that so? Yep. Can you dive into that for a sec? Yeah. So 401ks are a completely different tax structure than IRAs. Um, I am not an expert in the IRA tax structure. I just know uh, specific aspects of it that are, I would say, disadvantages with specific alternative investing. So for for us in real estate, uh, the UBIT tax, as I said, is (laughs) due to probably poor lobbyists inside the IRA tax code and those that lobby for IRAs, but the 401ks are exempt from it. Uh, If you ask why, I can't tell you why, other than, like I said, we just got better lobbyists that uh, had it not put in there. So uh, if does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. I got a question, Parker, for you. Uh, Yep. Twofold. Number one, to do this rollover, How long does it take? What's the time frame? That's part one. And part two is when do you recommend doing this? Let's say if somebody's already invested in a syndicate as a, a syndication deal as an LP, mm-hmm. but the capital event, like the sale or the exit or refinance, might not happen, let's say three years from now. Mm-hmm. Do you recommend doing this rollover now? Or it doesn't matter, they can do that in future? Those two questions. Yeah. So the the normal process for us, because we've got the system down for getting our clients set up, initiating the whole rollover process, because all the custodians you deal with, you get different experiences. We've had some where we've had to bring legal action into and others that are just real simple, depending on who you're working with and the education of the person on the other side of the phone. So we don't want our clients to get involved in that because most of them don't understand the process of how it works, what needs to be done. It can be, uh, an event that's got a lot of friction in it. So we cut that out, but it takes about five to 10 business days from, let's say you sign up on our end, we can get you open with bank accounts, LLCs built within two to three business days. But in terms of getting the assets moved over or the cash sent from your self-directed IRA moved over into this plan about five to 10 business days. And then what was your second question again? The, uh, Oh, when you want to move it over. Uh, It's really up to you. I think that if you do have a capital event coming up, I wouldn't wait because you just don't know what could happen, right? There's the custodians on the other end. We like to say that we do know timelines pretty well, but we've had We've had people that it's taken a while because the custodians have just slowed the process up. Un, unbeknownst to anything we do, we satisfy all the requests, but they just want to keep making it hard because I, I like to say it's like Hotel California. It's super easy to get in with these people, 
And then it's impossible to leave. They make it extremely difficult to get out. So that's why we're here to fight and get it done. But I'd say that with all the legislation going on, um, I would take the fear of doing what you want to do out and have more control, more flexibility, and no taxes in an environment that'll give you everything that you're doing now without the fear of having to go through all this friction that is most likely going to happen at some point. If it's not now, it's going to be in the near future. So, all right. So we talked about getting it moved over. It's called an in-kind rollover. It's a non-taxable event, uh, penalty-free event. You're just taking the asset movement from one, one retirement structure to another, uh, which is why it's not taxed. So let's talk about who's qualified. This is really important to understand. Uh, I would say essentially anybody can qualify for this. It's really easy to do it. Um, you've got syndicators, people who are self-employed. There's passive investors, W-2ers. And if you're a small business owner, uh, you can also qualify for this as well. The IRS, what they state, and I was talking about this on the Zoom portion with these guys earlier, is that 401ks have to have a source of income that sponsors the plan. So with these plans in particular, just if, if any of y'all have current 401ks with companies, the company you work for is the sponsor of the 401k plan. So any money that you make from that company can be put into the retirement plan. But you couldn't take your, we'll just call it like ABC company and then put it or it put income from ABC company into XY company retirement plan because XY company did not pay you that income. Therefore, it cannot be put in there. But with this plan in particular, you, I say it supports like side people with side hustles. Uh, you don't have to be generating any income. I think that's important to remember too. All the IRS states is that you have to be conducting business activity that is subject to either self-employment tax or payroll tax. If so, in theory, if you had a W-2 that you're paying yourself from for business activity you were conducting, or if you're a sole proprietor making 1099 income, that money that you're reporting to your Schedule C, or if you have an S-Corp that you're reporting income through, that goes to your Schedule C could be contributed to this plan. So that would be the stream of income you could contribute. Uh, and like I said, no income has to be actually made. So if I was to go out and the IRS was looking at what Parker was doing to qualify for this plan, and I'm sitting on a chair, you know, shirt off, feet up on a table selling lemonade, nobody has to buy my lemonade, but I'm conducting business activity that would be subject to, if, if I made any money, that income would be subject to self-employment tax if I reported it to my Schedule C, right? And then I could contribute that money into the plan, but I don't have to make any money. They would walk by and say, Parker's just, he's conducting business activity, so he's good. Uh, and we can dive into maybe some of y'all specific sit, uh, questions around your work uh, towards the end. So there's two ways you put money in. There's rollovers and contributions. Rollovers, if you have IRAs, uh, old company 401ks, TSPs, 403Bs, essentially any retirement plan out there other than Roth or inherited IRAs, those cannot be contributed inside of a 401k structure. That's just IRS rules uh, around that. But the contribution limits are another, or excuse me, the contributions is another way that people utilize a plan like this. So they can put in up to $58,000 a year. Uh, it can also be per person. So if you've got a business that you're generating a lot of income out of, you can uh, contribute that limit for your wife, your yourself, your kids. Um, and there's these things called KROS that we'll get into. Uh, that's a really cool aspect of this plan, but you can have both deferred and Roth and there's no income limits, which is great versus having income limits inside of an IRA. So what the SECURE Act basically said was that you can bring employees into the fold of a uh, retirement plan, uh, one specifically like this. So this is a big difference between uh, solo 401ks and our plan in particular. With EQRP, if you have, it's a self-directed 401k, just like a solo 401k, but 
With solo 401k structures, if you have any employees, you're prohibited from operating that account, have to shut it down. And you can't even have part-time employees either. You would have to shut it down and go into a more traditional uh, 401k plan. But the EQRP, you can maintain complete self-directed status to invest in these alternative assets and be able to uh, give. I, personally, I like the ability to give your employees an opportunity to learn how to invest themselves. So I think it's a great teaching opportunity to, to be able to give them that freedom and flexibility to learn how to invest in some options for their retirement. So we built this plan called the Safe Harbor EQRP. It's essentially the same thing as the EQRP I'm talking about, just for small business owners. So we, we custom built it for companies with up to 50 employees. You can match or defer, it includes the TPA, and there's no AUM fees. So the way our fee structures work, they're really flat, really upfront. And uh, you can save up to five times for your business. And I like being a former business owner myself. Having fixed costs is a great thing and not being blindsided with hidden fees, being nickel and dimed here and there. So that's the way we structure ours. It's completely self-directed. So you're not dealing with any custodians. You've got complete checkbook control. Uh, you got the asset and liability protection that's built in, the UBIT tax you're also safe from. And then uh, you've got the ability to invest in alternative assets, which is great, right? Crypto, real estate, which that is my big play right now, um, just like you guys are. And then you can take physical possession of uh, gold and silver, which means freedom for all. So that is what we're on mission to do, right? Is free individuals up from the current shackles that they're being held by and uh, use it as a big teaching opportunity too for those that are young. So there's a couple extra bonuses I'll talk about being KROS and then the $50,000 line of credit that can be used with a plan like this. Um, but first we'll, we'll talk about this unique conversion uh, opportunity as a real estate professional. So there's a case study where we had a client and her husband who was a real estate professional, she was a dentist, they converted $300,000 of their EQRP to Roth, but her husband being a real estate professional, they had bought a million dollar building uh, with their active income with $300,000 bonus depreciation that they took um, when they filed their taxes. So now because he was a real estate professional and that conversion they took in their Roth, the whole tax was completely nilled. So now that money that they converted because he was a real estate professional uh, basically net washed the taxable opportunity out and that money inside of their plan now is completely tax free and basis. So they could pull it out anytime. So that's a, it's a unique way if you're a real estate professional, how to take advantage of your taxable. Uh, it, I like to say, use real estate to, as your friend outside of retirement plan, and then also use it as your friend inside of the retirement plan when you're looking to convert. So K Roth's here. Um, they are utilized for kids. So KROS stands for kid. And you have the option to contribute up to $12,000 per year into uh, your kid's account. They are considered minor deductions. So you can, uh, let's just say you're a dentist. And this is actually a picture of Damien right here. Uh, he used to model for JCPenney, but he's actually got hair in this picture versus hair in real life. He's bald. Um but if you're a dentist, I like to use dentists because they're, they like to use their kids in their marketing. So if you had four kids, then let's say one's up on a billboard, one's going around the office a couple of times a week, picking up trash. You know, you might have them cleaning toilets. They're doing all these 1099 jobs. You could contribute up to $12,000 into a Roth account inside the EQRP for your kids. It's completely tax-free and recognized as Roth dollars, then you can also take the uh, tax deduction on your income at year end, which is great. So think about being able to contribute $12,000 for your kids each year. Let's say you start doing it when they're, you know, when they're born, then by the time they're 18, you know, do the math on that 18 times 12. I don't have a calculator in front of me, but that total would then be uh, 
considered basis, right? And you can invest that money how you want too. So you have the opportunity to grow their money, but also the basis that's inside of their plan can be pulled out at any time. So once college comes around, you can pull that money out, the basis out, and then use it for whatever you want. Um, and another important thing too, is when you're looking for assistance, maybe from uh, the universities, they don't recognize retirement dollars as uh, active income. So it's, it's another important kind of feature to know that uh, when they start doing okay, what, what kind of assistance do they need? How much will they qualify for? This doesn't uh, hurt them in a negative fashion for me able to get aid uh, at colleges. So that's a really unique feature. And then you have the $50,000 line of credit. So Damien, back in, before the market crashed, uh, he had a black card. And I, I like to say, I don't know anybody with a black card except for Damien. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he has a black card anymore, but... I used to imagine like a helicopter coming down and, you know, landing on your house and you have these James Bond like guys come out with these briefcases and present you with the black metal uh, American Express. And so he went to go buy a pallet of toilet paper once the market was tanking and everybody was in disarray and he goes up to buy it. And the cashier says, uh, your card declined. And he's like, what are you talking about? I got a black American Express. Like, the word no doesn't exist with me. And she said, no, your card's declining. It's not working. And he went to go check his uh, limit and it was $11,000. They had froze his account essentially. Um, and that's a scary thing. So you were given this, or you thought you had control to be able to go, you know, have all this purchasing power, but you were blocked because of a system that uh, limited you from being able to go out and do this. So with your retirement account, it's a great thing that there's a no credit checks. You're basically playing bank with yourself. You can take a personal loan out up to $50,000 in a time of need. And because you have complete checkbook control, you could just wire it to yourself. And we, we help all our clients on how to like document that and work through it. But all, you would pay it back over a five-year period, uh, plus minus one prime interest rate. And I'd say, why not pay yourself instead of paying a bank? And uh, you could go use that $50,000 for beef jerky. I mean, you can use it for whatever you want. And if you also wanted to generate some active income, you could take a personal loan out and then put it in a syndication because the, the transactions recognized as you in your retirement plan as a loan. So once you have the money, just like a bank, right? they don't care what you're doing with it as long as you pay them back. It's the same way that you it works with your retirement account. You can take that cash and go use it for active income purposes that you see fit. So a big... Hey, Parker, real quick question. Yeah. So is that kind of like a HELOC then? If I wanted to take 50K, I mean, it just goes against the 401K then, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it goes against the 401K. So... Uh, you can only take up to $50,000 or half the plan value. And then once the loan has been satisfied, uh, you can you have to wait one year from the date that the loan was satisfied to be able to take another personal loan out. Okay. What do you mean satisfied? Satisfied being, so if I, let's just say I pulled $50,000 out today on the 20th, next month on the 20th, I put that $50,000 back in. I have to wait a whole year from November 20th to November 20th, 22, to be able to take another personal loan out. Okay, got it, cool. Yeah, so the so kind of in closing, that one of the biggest concerns that you know millennials, boomers have uh, is retirement, right? We're, we're concerned, are we gonna have enough when we get to the end? And uh, the biggest thing that we can do is educate. And that's what we're super passionate about. So we can teach investors um, about these different retirement structures, kind of like we're doing today, right? And then also how to do deals uh, with using your retirement plan. I like to, I like to say our team uh, is like a white glove type service because just as I'm talking with you now, this is how I communicate with all of my clients. I'm not a advisor. There's no special names. Uh, letters next to my name. I didn't go to you know take my series six, any of these things, but we we work with so many clients who are doing specific investments and we have uh, 
run through thousands of deals to know what your options are. So we'll never tell you what to do. We'll only tell you how to do it. And if you come to us with a deal that you're looking to get into, we will help strategize and ask different questions that uh, may help us structure your investment in a different way to get you qualified. I had an individual that um, had a LLC that he was wanting to get into a, he basically signed a contract with a truck uh, and was going to be running some routes with this truck, uh, hired an individual to pay him. And then he was going to use his LLC to pay out of his EQRP with, but the way that that was structured originally, it would have been self-dealing. So what I told him was, hey, what you need to do is replace, rewrite your operating agreement to reflect the owner of your LLC as your EQRP and then your other partner, have him do all the work because it has to be passive, right? And now you're safeguarded from the IRS coming to you and saying, hey, this is a disqualified event. So if we these type of things were able to help troubleshoot and keep you from getting into trouble. Now, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, the, a self-directed uh, account. You have the ability to go invest in anything that you want, but if you're ever curious about what to do, that's why our team is here. And we want to serve our clients in that way. If you want more information, text EQRP to this number here, 307-213-3475. We'll send you a book. We'll send you the special report. I like to say the special report is a uh, 30,000 foot overview of what this plan is. It goes into uh, more high level what I talked about. And then the book that we can send you will go into the nitty gritty of what this plan is, what it can do, what it looks like with current um, just retirement structures that are out there. Damien wrote it. So he, uh, he spent a lot of time writing that book, but this is a way to engage us. And we'd love to be able to uh, send you some information as well. And <laughs> also, if you want to connect with me, this is uh, Ferris Bueller right here. You can email me, parker at eqrp.co. And you can call me. This is my direct cell, 307-630-0757. Uh, would love to talk with any of you as well if you have questions about your specific situation. Um, Mike and uh, Caleb can get my info to you as well should you have any questions. But I'd love to be able to help serve you all in any way possible. And that is all I got. I am here to answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, I got a question. I, a question. I don't know if I did ask or discuss a while ago regarding the tax Biden reform. Is the 401k going to be affected by what's going on with the IRA? Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Nope. Yeah, I think I heard uh, our 401k is going to be affected. They are not. Um, they are specifically targeting IRAs just because of the sheer volume of dollars that are in there. The 401k market is not scary enough to Congress to be a threat because there's maybe, you know, a trillion, a couple trillion dollars sitting in 401ks, self-directed 401ks. When you're looking at the IRA market where there's trillions, four or five times the amount, they're trying to get access to that money to be able to tax it. So that's why they're coming after IRAs extremely hard. I got a question, Parker. Imagine an employee with an employer by the employer and has a 401k sponsored by the employer where the employee puts a certain amount every paycheck and the employer matches that amount every mm -hmm. paycheck, right? Could you walk us through how will this employee or how can they roll over the 401k so that they don't lose the employer matching every pay cycle? and yet get the flexibility of the QRP. Yeah, so it's called an in-service rollover. So if you are currently working for a company with a 401k plan, most likely, and only in rare instances have I seen this, but uh, you can't move a active plan over while you're currently working there. Once service has been severed from that establishment that you're working for, it's then available to move over inside of this plan. But if you're currently working for a company, uh, 
unless you hit a specific age there or the way they have the documents written to where they'll allow you to do an in-service rollover. And most of that is basis. So anything that you've put in would be able to move over. But uh, in those cases in particular, the what you would have access to is either a traditional IRA you've been contributing to or uh, an old 401k that you have that could roll over into this plan. Or you start that side hustle, as you mentioned, right? Yeah, I mean, if you got a side hustle where you're, you know, making, let's, we'll just say $30,000, right? Because I think that most people that are working full-time, unless they've got some subscription model that they're crushing it in, uh, we'll say $30,000 you make through your S-Corp uh, dealing widgets, you'd be able to defer 19500 into the plan, into your EQRP, and then 20% of the remaining income that you have would then be able to be contributed inside of the EQRP because there's a profit sharing portion. You are the employee of the plan. So you're you're basically profit sharing yourself inside of the plan, which allows you to contribute those limits. So if I take a loan from the 401k in the current plan and the interest paid for myself and yep. if and the loan is the loan I can uh, do. I can exempt from the U, uh, UBIT taxes. Yeah. So if you take a personal loan, you're going to pay your plan back plus minus one prime interest rate. So you make money off yourself. Then any income that you make off of that investment goes straight to your personal income taxes. You're not. You're going to be paying. Uh, capital gains, all the all the active income taxes that you would be subject to outside of a retirement plan, but you're just you're paying your principal plus interest back into the plan. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, <laughs> Barbara, you had a question? Yeah, um, just for clarification. So now, based on what I understand right now, so W two employees can have their own four one k. Even if they don't have any any side gigs or side business, is that possible? You said employees. Yeah, the W two employees. You can, um, and like I said, qualifying is really easy. So we've got a uh, affiliate program that qualifies people. So uh, a good number of our clients take advantage of it to where when they're using their plan. They'll say, hey, they, they serve more as a relationship broker or introduce us to uh, individuals who may want to learn more about this. So that is considered business activity. Right. And uh, you could you could roll over your old retirement plans inside and then any income that you would make through the affiliate program that we have. Uh, there's some referral fees that come out for people that sign up. So friends, family that you refer we would pay you through that. And then that income that you make could be contributed. So any employee can have this plan. And I would say a lot of our clients are, you know, currently working W-2s trying to get out, right? Real estate is their play. And they want to, uh, you know, leverage their business once it starts generating a lot of income. And then we just change the sponsor. So you could go from a sole proprietor and we could just amend the documents to reflect your new LLC that's generating income, whether you're a syndicator or whatever it may be. So everybody has access to this plan. Parker, a couple little general questions. Um, for an investor, what are the, I mean, general guidelines of an investor needs to be whenever they use an EQRP? I know with an IRA, there's no self-dealing. Um, and you mentioned the limits already. Is there anything else? in general? Yeah. So those two just kind of, uh, you know, go with retirement plans overall, but with a plan like this, it's so unique because you have the opportunity to get into private placement. Um, I mean, I've had people invest in cattle farms. There's, there's all sorts of unique investments you can get into. The biggest thing to remember is remaining passive. So there's, They'll say, well, if I'm like part owner of this company, can I invest in it? There's some there's some lines that get kind of gray, uh, but that's why our team's here to kind of answer those questions that necessarily haven't been asked yet, because each opportunity that presents itself, uh, 
could you know present a whole another list of questions but i'd say remember that you got to be passive in an arm's length distance and then if you're doing single family uh you got to have like property managers run the property any expense that's paid has to come from your retirement plan um so you're 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 treating it like a business but that's why our team's here is to help set you up for success okay awesome uh so what happens if I sell, let's say that single family home or that um, the syndication that Mike's a part of that sells, right? And so the 401k is invested in that. Um, what happens What happens when the asset's sold? Well, you get the money back and you don't pay UBIT tax. And then you can send that money out to whatever you want to do again. Nice. So it has to stay. What if I want to go do something personal with it? you could take a loan out but you could you can't realize any gains from an investment you make with your retirement because just like a stock right and you anything you invest in we'll just use the stock market because any gains you make are going to just stay inside of your retirement tax free the only two times you're going to get taxed is when you do a uh, a distribution for income tax or a conversion to Roth. Those are the only two times you'll be taxed inside of this plan in particular. So uh, you're already investing in a tax-free environment. So capital gains don't exist. You know, if you invested Roth into, a, you know, we'll just say Bitcoin and it went to a, a million dollars or a billion dollars, you're not going to pay taxes on it or any sort of kind of tax because of the environment that that money is being activated and invested through. Okay. Now, what if I want to take a distribution check? Then you would just pay penalty and realize the incomes you pull out on income taxes. Okay. What's that tax rate? Your current income tax rate, wherever you, so whatever you're making, you just add that to it plus 10% penalty. Okay, cool. Hey, Parker, could you, um, you mentioned that example of the dentist that rolled his EQRP into a Roth. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was a taxable event. Right. But then they used that rock to buy or they bought real estate as well. Yep. And then the bonus depreciation offset the tax penalty. Did, did I understand that correctly? Yep. So the Roth, because now the Roth is completely, the tax has been paid. So any yep. gain come out of that, you don't have to pay taxes on anymore. Right. Correct. So yeah. that's, that's the power of Roth. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And I hate saying it like this. It's just kind of how it feels, right? I think intuition is an important thing. And, you know, Roth is too good to be true for a lot of people. But you can see that the government's trying to take away your ability to leverage any sort of gain that could give you money that they can't tax. So I'd say if you can... If you can convert to Roth and you can afford to pay the income tax, then great. Um, because anything that you make with that money is going to be tax free. And then the basis you can pull out at any time, right? So before you retire, that basis can be used for whatever. And then once you hit that retirement age, any of the gains that you've made in that Roth account are now realized as tax free. And then you can pull that out at any time. What's the annual limit on Roth contribution? I'm trying to remember because I've got a whole host of things running through my head. Um, the the there's a six thousand dollar contribution. Then you've got backdoor Roths that they're looking to take away too. So, I uh, I don't about right. Six yeah, six seven thousand. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, the four hundred one k Roths. So you got yeah the backdoor Roths. Yeah. But with 401k structures, right, you've got a 10x limit with what you can contribute to a 401k versus the IRAs. But the reason the 401k is a little bit higher is because of the stream of income that you're generating through business activity, which is why it's a little bit higher. And with IRAs, for the most part, uh, you know, I could go open up an IRA and just put money in there, but it's six thousand dollars a year, so my whole thing is like, how are you going to retire off six thousand dollars a year, like? <laughs> you're, if you have a family of four or six thousand dollars, it's like your monthly budget. 
I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I, I got a question. Um, getting back to Shilpa's question, if we can clarify what Shilpa asked. So I think she asked, she takes a 401k loan, okay? okay. She's got the money in her hand, and yep. then she puts it into a, a EQRP account. So, you know, it's not um, IRA money. It's it's pure cash, um, and and that's the basis, and it goes into an EQRP. I think that's what she asked. Um, okay. Is that al- is that allowed? So you can't arbitrarily put money inside of this plan. You would the only way you could do something like that is if you had the business activity to back that up. So if you've got fifty thousand dollars you're putting into the plan, then you've got to show fifty thousand dollars of earned income from somewhere, something outside of your W two, for that to be able to happen. Okay. Arthur, another question. You mentioned that EQRP can also be set up for a business with up to 50 employees, Mm -hmm. right? So in a sense, it is beyond or it's bigger than solo 401k doesn't let you allow that. EQRP does. And you also mentioned that it doesn't matter when the employees come and go. Mm -hmm. So can you set up like a vesting criteria for those employees? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So is there or are there any advantages of, let's say, a regular 401k with employees that you get a slide on, right? A 401k with employees, with the EQRP with employees. Mm -hmm. Other than this, employees come and go. Is there any other advantage for the business owner? Um, Yeah, I I like to say yes, because you're getting to now realize your. I'm just going to continue to use Dennis because imagine having all this money that's coming in that they're putting into the plan, right? And then also not being able to take that income and utilize it for alternative investing. So you as a business owner now can take that income that you have, you could roll over your old plan into this plan and then now start investing in syndications and realizing greater gains and greater returns through this. So I think it's your ability of choice. It's your ability of control. And uh, and depending on your current financial situation, we work with a third-party administrator to kind of talk through what is the best option for you when it comes to the type of plan that you have. If you want to profit share, if you want to you know def- do deferrals, um, so we work through a whole host of questions with, with you to get that figured out. So if I'm a doctor and I have a, a practice that has, say, 50 employees, mm-hmm. I'm really wanting to help them invest in real estate. Could I set up, each individual would set up an EQRP, but could that plan get bundled and like almost as a fund to be uh, able to in real estate? Is that... So... If I hear you correct, are you essentially saying like, <laughs> could I and my employees invest in a syndication deal? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. You can. Um, there's so you would what you would do is you like build an LLC on the outside of the plan to be able to pull the money in, and then you would have the ownership structures of the operating agreement built or you can have everybody send money to the syndication deal or the LLC that's buying the said property um, from their account specifically. And then our team helps like you, your employees would get the same treatment from our team in terms of support, help, filling all that stuff out that you would get as the business owner. But you theoretically could. It's just do they have enough money in there to send to a syndication? Sure. Gotcha. So earlier, Parker, we talked about Roth. Now, can you do a real, I mean, I mean, what is a Roth? Uh, just high level, what is a Roth? Yeah. Okay. So what a Roth is, is income that you've paid taxes on already. So the advantage to defer is being able to realize your income without paying taxes and then write that off. But you're going to, you're basically deferring taxes at a later date. That's traditional. So you hear me say traditional and Roth. So what Roth is, is, Hey, I think that I want to take advantage of the current tax rate today. Go ahead and pay that. 
And then now those dollars that you've paid taxes on, right, are now no longer going to be taxed down the road. So you're setting it aside. Now you're using these Roth dollars that have already paid taxes to invest. So any of the dollars that you use with Roth that generate any sort of return are realized as tax-free because the dollars that you use were tax-free. So that's the importance of Roth is uh, being able to take advantage of a system that recognizes gains used from tax from income that's already been paid taxes on is never having to pay taxes on them again. So my Roth is 50 grand taxes are already paid. Right. And so then eventually I use that money maybe a couple of years down the road to do a syndication. And so let's say I two X my money. So I pull a hundred grand out that hundred grand. I don't need to pay taxes all at all. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. So he is so it's 50, 50, oh, so that's retirement age. Yeah. yeah, so correct. So if you're, you can pull basis out. So what basis is, is let's say I put $50,000 in Roth and three years later, I have $100,000 Roth, but I'm 40 years old. Then that fifty dollars, that fifty thousand dollars is considered basis because that's what I originally put in, right? So anything over that basis is considered tax free, but only until your retirement, uh, you hit that retirement age to start pulling out. Okay, so I need to wait a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. All right. So say I have a four fifty seven B. Yep. So government. 401k pretty much, right? I can't, so say say I quit my job and I put that money, roll it over into EQRP. Mm -hmm. I can't use that money to fund my own syndication. Correct. Would I have to, what could I do to be able to fund my own syndication? (laughs) (laughs) I love that you re-asked the question. (laughs) That is the million dollar question, right? Um, So I'm going to stand up for a second and walk and talk because my dog is talking to me and I think he's got to go out to the bathroom. So I apologize. Um, So what you can do is take a personal loan out, right? Up of $50,000. And because that is recognized as as a transaction between you and your retirement account, you can use that money for whatever you want. So that's, that's one way or loophole around being able to fund your own deal. Um, but you could just take that money directly from, you know, your, if you roll over and say, you know what, I just want this income to be able to uh, use for a syndication. I'm going to pay the penalty, pay the income tax on it, take it as a distribution then you can do that. But uh, I think the loan's the best way to go. If fifty thousand dollars would satisfy the bell cow requirements for your deal and get people in, then I would do that. Cool. Cool. So, so say I didn't uh, take the, the fifty thousand dollar loan and just accepted the penalty. You think that I guess depreciation could wipe out that penalty, or when do you pay that penalty? Well, I mean, it's it's really kind of based. You pay it the the following year, right? When you're filing your taxes. So uh, there's two different ways. Like I'd say, one thing, like a question I get all the time is like, and this is based off of just people I've worked with because I'm not a CPA, not an expert. Uh, but they say, well, I want to real, I I want to use my active income to get all the the tax write offs. I'm like, okay, well. Why wouldn't you want to make tax-free gains on your investments? Like it's just two different ways to generate income or write off. Right. So I think that's really based on your own personal strategy and what you want to do. I say, if you have retirement dollars that need to be put to use, why not just go ahead and use it for real estate syndication um, that you can generate some better returns on Right. Instead of leaving it in a maybe more, cons- I say conservative, like the stock market, something that's going to get you maybe four to six percent over the course of a lifetime, or you can put it in a deal 
you know, that three to five years pays out and you take that money and deploy it into something else. And, and you could be involved in everything. So with the EQRP, you can have stocks, you could have crypto, you could have private loans, you could have syndications. And so if you want to diversify a little bit, anything that you're making over here that you want to generate interest on the side because you just don't know what you want to do with that money yet, then when the deal comes, you put it back into your bank account, you would just deploy it and then send it off to the other investment. So you've got ultimate flexibility to be able to move that money around and do what you want. Um, it just kind of comes down to your own personal strategy and what you feel like is best for you. Anyone else? What else? We're good to hear. Anyone else on Zoom? Hey, Parker, I just want to let you know, uh, thank you very much for a great presentation, man. Great information. You did a great job. I uh, I already clicked on your calendar link and made an appointment for next Wednesday and sent you a Zoom link for that appointment. Nice. I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty close to my bedtime, so I'm going to call it a night. I'm about out of gas, ladies and gentlemen, but God bless you all. It's a pleasure to see you all. Cool. Right. See you, Rob. Have a good night. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we're good here. So, Parker, I know it's kind of getting past your bedtime, too. Um, so, yeah, thanks uh, for your time, Parker. And if anyone, you know, wants to get in touch with him or if you didn't already write down his information, reach out to Mike and I. Um, so, and we can definitely shoot over his information. So, appreciate your time, Parker. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.